Welcome back guys, did a little bit more work on the Eaton 90s this week, haven't had a chance to put out a video, but it's Saturday now and I want to get these things completely rebuilt and ready to go back on the engine, and there's a couple other things I want to discuss that were brought up this week as well, so let's get into it. Well as you can tell it looks a little bit different now, I got both of the superchargers off the top and all blown apart and laid out on the bench over here. I cleaned everything up the other day, sprayed everything out, got all the aluminum shavings out of the insides. And basically at this point I'm ready to start rebuilding the snouts and as you can see here I got one pulley off already and I didn't have a puller for that either last night I whipped up this puller here cut my plates out on the plasma table welded a nut on here that happened to be the same thread pitch as my harmonic balancer puller and drilled and tapped these four holes in the bottom plate so this will slide under the pulley put the bolts in through the top plate and then just use my balancer puller center over here in this nut to drive the pulley off. Already got one done, gotta do the other one and then we can start rebuilding those. The other thing with the nose cones is, the nose cones had paint on them. I'm gonna get all this paint off and everything and just give them a wire wheel finish to kinda of match the housings here, which I already did get wire wheeled. The other thing is, I got all my welding done on the back, on the flanges, everything is ready to go welded up. I removed the, the bypasses in these things, so where the if you could see it. Where the shaft came in for that, I also welded that hole up so everything's completely sealed. Now, because I removed the bypasses, I wasn't, I wasn't going to do anything with that in the first place, so this would have been the hole where the butterfly was to basically bypass the roots and go directly into the intake to kind of regulate boost. But, I was afraid just by leaving this hole wide open down to the bottom that that was going to pool up with fuel because I'm running carbureted and I didn't want all that fuel coming in and kind of filling this hole up and having a puddle or a, you know like a half a cup of gas sitting inside of it. So what I did was I miter cut a piece of pipe and I really wish I would have done this beforehand so I could have welded it off on the inside and just smoothed that out but I didn't. So what I did was I just capped that pipe and I welded it on the bottom. So if any fuel sits in there at all, it's just going to be a little bit on the outsides of that. And I also think it's just going to flow better ramping up like that instead of coming into that milled hole like it was before. Uh, as for the housings after that, looking online a little bit, I think I'm just going to go ahead and port these right away, carry the V out to the front, make them a little more efficient, and we're going to plug the silencer holes, all four of them in both housings. The housings themselves cleaned up pretty good and I, it was brought to my attention by a couple of people that you know these things aren't meant for, for fuel to be ran through. And one of the biggest things was the back seal here if we can see that. These are the earlier ones and do not have an actual seal on them. There is, if you can see on the edge, there is a small piece of rubber that did some sort of sealing on them to kind of keep the grease in but they make a later model bearing that would go in the back here with an actual seal on it. So I was asked, you know, aren't you worried about the grease washing out of those bearings? Well, I, I, not really. I mean, if, if it happens, it happens, and we'll replace them with the newer style bearings, which I'll probably do in the future anyway. But as for right now, I'm just gonna re-grease those bearings, put it together, and I mean, it's nine bolts to pull the snout back out. We'll do a little run time on it, pull them back apart, Hey, and let's see, you know, no one really has an answer to that question. Let's see if the fuel does wash the grease out of those needle bearings after a little bit of run time. Super easy to pull apart, we might as well find out. And in the future, yeah, we'll go to the later model bearings anyway with the seal anyway. But I'm trying to get this thing running so we can take it down and do some burnouts in it next month. So that's pretty much what we got to do with the superchargers here yet. Uh, rebuild the snouts, get them ready, clean everything up get the porting done in the bottom, plug the silencer holes, and we can put those things back together and get them ready to basically run on the engine. One other thing that was brought up, and I don't know why I did this, I, I, guess, I guess I really wasn't thinking about it when I was doing it, I was just kind of excited to get it done, but the tensioner. The tensioner should not be on that side. Reason being is, if you guys remember, the belt comes up over here, over a supercharger, down under that, up and down. The crankshaft on the engine spins clockwise. You got all the load from the both super, from the two superchargers on the top. When you get on the throttle, you're going to be pulling on, the, you know, pulling the drag on both superchargers, and that's going to swing that tensioner out. That load, when that pulls down on the bottom here, it's going to swing that thing out. And when you lift, the chances are it's going to slap, 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 and probably throw a bunch of slack in there and whip the belt off 
my idler pulleys or wherever it can come off or on the tensioner itself. So what I'm going to end up doing is probably order one more of these pulleys, make one more standoff like this, get another one of these here where the tensioner is and cut this back off here, my tensioner bracket. And we're going to move it down here on the bottom and come off the two holes by the fuel pump, maybe come off the water pump too and get it down here so the tensioner pulley is on the side over here. That way when it pulls over there, your slack side is here and that'll, that's the way most vehicles are and that's the way it should be. So that should solve that problem. Anyway, we're going to jump back into these superchargers and the first thing I'm going to do is get both of these snouts rebuilt and ready to go. Well that's it for my rear bearings and the input shafts for the superchargers. I got the hubs pushed back on and the bearings pushed on so those are ready to go. I have to push my front bearings into the case when, when you push everything together you kind of do it all at once but these get pushed into the case and the front and then the shaft pushed into the inside of them. But before I do that I'm going to get this paint off like I said before so these end up looking like the same finish that are on the supercharger cases and I was looking at them and because there's really no there's no cross holes or anything in there. It's just a, a smooth bore all the way through. I'm just going to take these over to the sandblaster, maybe shove some rags inside the bore just to help a little, and blow the paint off of them, finish them off with the wire wheel, and then wash them up really good, and then finish putting the, the bearings and shaft and seal back together and get the pulleys back on. So let's go get these things sandblasted, wire wheeled, and finish up the snouts. Well, I finally got all the paint blown off these lower snouts here and I'm just gonna give them a quick wire wheel over to dull them up and we'll finish uh, putting them back together after I give them a good wash down with some brake cleaner. Well that's the finish I was looking for Adam. Got them both wire wheeled down just like the cases and that's how they're gonna stay so get them washed up and get the shafts pressed back in, put the seals in and get the pulleys back on. We're ready to roll on these and we'll get the porting done and the silencer holes filled on these next. Seal time! Alright, so it's been about a week now since I started filming the first part of this video. And in that first half we got the superchargers taken apart, cleaned up, paint taken off the snouts, snouts rebuilt, new couplers on them, everything ready to go. And basically, there's only a couple things left I gotta do before I can reassemble the superchargers on it. And I'm gonna show you what those things are right now. So first of all, I was looking online about porting these housings, and there's a lot of videos on them. And basically, this is what everyone does. They come in, and the later model ones are already done like this, but you, they carry the V-notch all the way to the front bar up here, to the back side here, and just take these corners out. And they say it makes a little, little more boost, they claim, but they run more efficient because you're getting a bigger air charge put in. The more you can get in through this V-notch, the less times the air has to go around more than once, which apparently makes them a little more efficient. And I can see that. Obviously, the bigger inlet you have, the more efficient they're going to run. So I'm going to come in here and just take, I'm going to take a majority of this off. I'm not going to go crazy. I'll probably leave a little rounded corner in here. Just for strength purposes honestly if I leave a little round over here it's gonna be almost like a gusset you know strengthening the front bar here a little bit on top of it and you know the other thing is too my blower plate 
that thing's half inch aluminum on the top up here and it does have actually it stayed really straight when I welded it it's got about a sixteenth of an inch deviation from side to side I, I'm sure it's probably crowned in the middle so just for a little more strength purposes I'm gonna leave a little corner in here but we're gonna take a majority out the second thing I learned while looking into these because I'm not really familiar with them is that these are actually silencer holes and if you plug these holes these things whine like crazy when you get on the throttle so some of the guys out there doing it were all meddling them or JB welding them which is kind of scary because if that breaks loose goes down the intake it's gonna end up in your cylinder blow the motor up so what I'm gonna do is and I did see one guy do this online I'm just gonna shave some aluminum like quarter inch thick aluminum bars I'm gonna cut, grind them down so the angle is the same here and just put a few good tack welds on it with the TIG welder on both superchargers plug those up because honestly I want this thing to be as annoying as possible I want it to be loud I want it to whine I want it to be you know crazy I actually have a noisy timing gear we're gonna put in the put in the finished engine so with that being said let's get into this I'm gonna grind those corners out get the get the silencer holes plugged and at that point well at that point we gotta move the tensioner the belt tensioner over to this side probably add one more idler wheel and at that point we're finally ready to start putting the, the finished or final engine together. Supercharger number one is now ported as far as I'm gonna go anyway. There's probably some room for improvement in here Like I said, I I could come in here and get this corner cleaned out, but I'm just gonna leave it I'm really not too worried about it. I just wanted to do what I could uh, You know quickly just take the, the majority of that out of the corner and I'm pretty happy with it I chased over the edge here didn't didn't take any material off to upset anything But I just kind of buffed the edge off on the V back here and brought it in forward and basically you can see what this one looks like now and what it looked like before so that's it I'm gonna finish that up like this or finish this one up like this anyway and the only thing I have to do is when I put my case back together and the rotors in I'm gonna trim these bolts down so they're not sticking out the back because this actually was like a dead-ended uh, bore for this bolt coming in and they're gonna stick inward now so I'll just trim them off put a little thread sealer on them and call them good so I'm gonna match this one up quick and then we'll move on and get these um, silencer holes plugged in both of them. I got my four silencer holes plugged got my pieces fitting nice and tight now and I'm gonna get these suckers welded in well that is it for the silencer holes they are plugged up got two welds on the inside of each one and a good tack on the outside I'm pretty confident none of those are gonna be falling out into the intake my rough quick port job is all done got the corners knocked out and I'm pretty happy with that got the ridges off the inside here and I'm not even gonna waste the time coming in here and just you know polishing that or anything I think that's gonna be good enough so we're ready to put these things together I'm gonna get everything rounded up and we'll get the rotors and the drives back in and get the holes all taped up so we don't put any more filth or garbage in them while they're sitting here waiting to be final assembled on the engine so right now I'm just taking this piece of scotch bright just chasing over that that inlet where I ported it a little bit just to make sure there's no burrs or anything sticking up on the end and there's really not much of anything so I think we're gonna be pretty good also here I'll show you guys the inside quick where the silencer holes were plugged those plugs worked out real nice far enough below the the bore on the inside of the housing and they fit fairly tight in there too 
So those worked out good. So I just pulled out these two pieces from under the uh, where the PCV valve used to be and you can see there was some shavings in there too from me just kind of porting those housings on the bottom. Seeing that we're going to be running carbureted carburetor up on top, I'm going to be able to come off the back of the carburetor down to a valve cover for doing my crankcase ventilation. So these are actually going to be non-functional. The bore comes down through the bottom and if we can see in here, kind of, there's a hole right here that would be drawing into the roots on the supercharger and venting from the crankcase uh, basically down here on this hole. That hole would be here, coming straight up through this bore. This is basically just going to be blocked off by gasket, so that's really not going to do anything except be an empty void. So basically I'm just going to gut everything and then put the caps with the gasket back on the top to seal it to prevent the vacuum leak but I don't need them anymore and obviously there were some shavings in there so I'm gonna get those bores cleaned out really good too before we start putting the roots and the uh, snouts back on. Well, at this point, other than putting oil in both of them, they're done, they're ready to go. So that is pretty much gonna wrap it up for today. The superchargers are 100% rebuilt, cleaned up, and sealed off. I got them bolted back on the top plate right now, and Basically all I gotta do is put oil in them and they're ready to go other than making some gaskets for them. I did put the belt back on now and the next, pretty much the next order of business here is moving the tensioner back down to this side and I'm probably gonna take this idler pulley off and put it over on this side to get that belt to come in to get my wrap on the top and on the bottom to get my surface area back from when I remove the tensioner. And also when I put the tensioner here, it'll push in here and I'll gain this back after removing this. Basically when I do that, I think I'm just going to cut this solid standoff off, flush with the front of this bracket, and just make a whole new one for this pulley to put back over here, probably somewhere, probably somewhere right above this bolt somewhere to push in up here. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up guys. Uh, it, it, it'll be running soon, hopefully. I got to pull the heads off the car, get the engine block down here we're using, and we can basically start putting this together after a little bit more work on it. So. Thanks for watching guys, till next time.